Oh, hello. I greet you before you get here. You've managed to <coughs> find me again. See, we started to get some pictures up. I've just put this up here. This is um, it's a lovely thing <coughs> that the uh, Irish artist Ross Wilson sent me. He actually sent it to me after the news of my mother's death. And I, it was a beautiful sign of sort of hope and new life and metamorphosis. It's a lovely thing. Uh, anyway, come in. You can see I've got the pictures up here now. I'm going to keep changing them around because I've got... That's my David Jones resurrection. It's one of the treasures of my thing. It's a wonderful, wonderful piece, I think. Uh, Sir Exit Christus de Sepulchre. Uh, so, yes, we're, we're looking a bit more ourselves here. Um, you've seen that. That's the lovely set of miniature illustrations that the artist Roger Wagner did for my... Um, my quarantine quatrains, my, my set of poems about, uh, so I, and it's got my own writing on here as well as his signature. O oh Christ who suffers with us, hold us close, deep in the secret garden of the rose, raise over us the banner of your love, and raise us up beyond our last repose. So actually, funny enough, that's three resurrection things we've looked at already. I don't think you've seen this one before. I, I sort of, this, uh, you know, emerged out of the unpacking. I made this painting myself. I painted it of my uh, <coughs> my last boat, which I sadly had to sell, um, Dayspring, named after the ship my great-grandfather built. Um, lovely little gaff cutter. I've got another gaff cutter now. And I put Rebecca Mary's two uh, cover pieces for my different books as a pair there. And then these are all Ross Wilson. Again, as a sort of pair, Yeats and C.S. Lewis. And that's a beautiful bird on a branch that he did also actually out of my, my quarantine quatrains poems. Anyway, I, something I'd like to show you. We're still working with the double shelving here. Now look, um, not very, just tucked in between Helen Waddell's Beasts and Saints, which are stories from the Desert Fathers, and the Sem Sunday Sermon to the Church Fathers. But over here is Mike Harding's little book, The Little Book of the Green Man. You know that's a figure that I find really fascinating, the so-called foliate heads, um, which some people have interpreted as a kind of pagan survival. But I think there's something... Christ-like or anticipating Christ about this great figure of life and new growth and resurrection. I've written a song about that. Anyway, come and sit down. Because um, although I've had to prune my library and sort of lose some books, I'm of course always gaining them and happily people sometimes send me them. And I'm really glad this has turned up because it arrived in the old house just as we were getting packed up and I wanted to really get into it and I thought, oh golly, I'll lose it in the, in the but I found it again among the, uh, where it belongs, among the slender volumes of modern poetry. So this is also called The Green Man and it's a new book of poetry, indeed the debut volume of poetry by a poet called David, David Russell Mosley. And you can see he's kindly inscribed it to Malcolm, thank you for the inspiration. And I think it's a good collection, but it's got a particular interest to in me. I've often talked to you about how poets that I love have influenced or inspired me, and I've always been interested by the poets that inspired them. I think poetry is a... Although it's written individually and sometimes written in apparent isolation. Actually, English poetry is one long conversation uh, and an exchange of ideas and images and a development of ideas and images and even phrases and forms across time and uh, over generations and also amongst contemporaries. So it turns out that um, this poet has been quite strongly influenced by me. Um, and I recognise that as soon as I started reading the poems, I could see that he, his interest in the form, in the sonnet, and some of his particular themes were kind of in conversation with my poetry. Indeed, he kindly acknowledges this. He has two excellent. He says, talks about two poets that helped me clarify my language and gave me encouragement to keep writing. But he says, I also want to thank Malcolm Guy, the poet, 
and theologian who showed me that formal poetry can still have legs and still bring meaning in the modern age. Well, that's, um, that's uh, music to me because uh, that's one of the things I'm chiefly trying to do is recover and revive and re-establish the validity of form and rhyme and metre as, as at least part of the repertoire or in, in the armoury, if you like, of a modern poet. You might be wanting to write free verse as well. So uh, I've really enjoyed reading this collection and I just thought I'd give you a little sampling of it. And there's one that particularly um, comes to mind because um, you may remember last time when we met in my hut in the Temple of Peace and I was reading some more of my ballad for form Arthurian poetry. The last one I read to you, I said I'd had a chance to riff on Thomas the Rhymer. That was the one about the elfin knight. And um, there's a poem here that riffs on Thomas the Rhymer. So Thomas the Rhymer is a wonderful old ballad about a poet, a rhymer, clearly, um, who meets the kind of queen of the fairies and uh, riding, you know, riding on a horse one day and he has this encounter with, with her. Uh, you know, it's got the ballad goes, you know, her skirt was of the grass green silk, her mantle of the velvet fine, a dilka teta, her horse's mane, hung fifty silver bells and nine. And she sings to him, you know, harp and car. car. <laughs> Come along with me, Thomas the Rhymer. And she takes him to Fairy and under the hill, and, and he has all kinds of adventures with her there. And then he, he, this is all set on Huntley Bank in the Eldon Hills, through which I've walked. And um, then he re-emerges, sort of 20 years later, not a day older, and, and kind of makes his way home. And um, uh, in that poem, in that original ballad, she chose, shows him the way to fair Elfland, um, but shows there are the other paths, the paths to heaven and to hell, and there's this middle path. But he, as a, as a mortal, has to come back and make the same choices in life that we have and try and find the heavenly path. So uh, I think this is beautiful, and I think this is a poem, this poem, Thomas the Rhymer Comes Home, is about how our own encounters with the imaginative arts and writing and fairy don't have to be a distraction or a waylaying. They can actually sharpen our senses and open our minds and eyes to come back to the good things of our own Christian and sacramental life, which are beautifully hinted at in the last line of this. So he hear this. Thomas the Rhymer comes home. I looked down that bonny road and on it did I tread. It often seemed the road of life, but sometimes of the dead. Marvels were there on that road. I could not tell them all. Gnomes and dwarves, elves and fay, dragons fly and giants fall. More wondrous still the trees I saw, the mountains rising greater, the sun, the moon, the dancing planets, and man in our enchanted nature. I found myself on the fairy road, and onward did we tread. We entered home by the forest door, and found the wine and bread. And then I'll just read you also his um, his title poem, uh, which is to the Green Man. Effoliating foliage, he haunts his local habitation. The tutelary spirit, ripener of wildest blackberry, protector of the bees' humblest wants. From cloves to honeysuckles, from elm to maple, he cares for the wood as if it were his garden. The iridescent lights of night are starred in his eyes. He gathers food for his greenwood table. And once, in ages now so long forgotten, his greening power helped even us to grow. He was our teacher and our dearest friend. But now on the new wine we are besotted, drunk on this technological flow, still, even in the gales, he will not bend. And then just one last one from this the final poem of the sequence, which interests me because it's called The Holy Grail, and of course I'm writing, essentially, a whole ballad sequence about the, about the Holy Grail and Galahad coming to achieve the quest of the Grail. And uh, this is a very interesting kind of cosmic view of the Grail, in which, in a sense, after the, the Grail is, of course, the holy chalice that was, that, that was used at the Last Supper, but also Joseph of Arimathea brought it when Christ was on the cross, so the legend goes, and, and, and it received the, the blood uh, of Christ as, as he died. So, um, but this is a kind of almost cosmic rereading of that. The Holy Grail. Who held the holy chalice that caught his blood, blended with the shimmering water of life, 
catching it, this strange admixture rife with all the active potency of the good. And who was washed in this outpouring flood, made into the bridegroom's newfound wife, washed away from pain, from death, from strife, and into the paradisal garden wood? It was the earth who received the blood and water, and the green man carried it through the flowers, the trees through all living things without fail. He bore the chalice, he became to the altar, Christ spreading through everything by his greening power. So the earth became the Holy Grail. It's really beautiful that and the Christ coming with the greening power. And I, I do think it's it's developing in a good in a you know original poetic way some of the themes that I myself have um, have worked on and worked through. So it's very encouraging because you don't know whether the poetry you're writing when you come to write it is just going to be a dead end and it'll be fine for you but it's not going to kindle anything in anyone else. But I think you know poetry needs not only to be generous but to be generative to 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 kindle new poems so I have to say it was hugely encouraging to receive this this volume and and feel that um, somebody else had taken a few of the seeds that blow in the wind of my poetry and made their own greening and and beautiful poetry out of it so that was an encouragement a little diversion or not as I continue to work with the various sources on my King Arthur poetry anyway lovely to see you and thanks for dropping by <laughs>